like I say, yesterday I was very, very busy. And uh, sometimes you get to a point where you just got to let go and let God. And usually out of these weak times when you are busy and you're weak and you don't have what you thought was a message, etc., usually you find uh, that things begin to flow very well and usually you get your best messages. So I've learned that over many years, not to stress about much. God's in control. God is sovereign. His spirit is omnipresent, omnipotent, all-knowing. And that the whole concept of being weak is, is that then you bring forth he who is strong. And I'm not talking about physical strength here. I'm talking about strength, your mind, your soul. And, uh, and, and the strong one comes through and speaks through you and brings forth truth through you. As, as, as you are ministering under the anointing. And I know that Gabby was talking about mum yesterday when she was speaking, because she's been very weak. She's got long COVID. But it was a very anointed message and a very anointed time. Because that's what happens when you're weak. He who is strong turns up. And so we learn to not ask for strength necessarily, but to delight to know the truth. Uh, and, and Paul, the preacher that we know and we love, who brings us the revelation of the new covenant, said he delights in infirmity. He delights that when he was weak. He delights because then he knows that then the strength will come, the solical strength, the spiritual strength, to bring forth the purposes of God. And he would say when he went to a congregation, he'd turn up and he said, I don't come to you in in great intellect or in great strength or, or, or great anything. I come as, uh, you know, weak and in, I come in trembling and in fear. Uh, so it's sort of a bit of enigma to, um, to many to, to know God's ways is so opposite to man's ways. And it's in these opposites, sometimes we find great truth and great liberty and great freedom. You know, we are, we're in a world right now that's under great stress and uh, men's hearts are failing them through fear. But we have learned that the only fear that we should fear is to fear the Lord. And then to fear that there's a rest that's been promised us that we don't enter into. That's the only fear that we should really fear as servants of the Lord. And... Um, Though the earth be removed, the word says, fear not. You couldn't get any worse than that, than the earth being renewed, removed under your feet through an earthquake or something. He said, fear not. And I think there's 365 three not, fear nots in the Bible. That's one for every day of the year. Fear not. So the only thing you're supposed to fear is that there's a rest been promised to you. And you haven't entered into it. You're still struggling. You're still fighting. Um, and, 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 and that doesn't help the situation. And so I've learned, and many of us have learned, that over extreme times, you do the opposite. You, you move in an opposite spirit. And so when it becomes very stressful, you get on the couch and take a nap. Uh, or when it becomes really fearful, you take a walk. Uh, you do the opposite to what people are being geared to do by a force called fear. But God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we renew our minds, and it becomes a spiritual mind. And the spiritual mind has the ability to enter into the rest. The natural mind or the carnal mind can't basically do that because it's contrary to the wisdom that they've been weaned on, which is the world's wisdom. So it's over many decades of walking with God, walking with the Lord as Christians that we begin to learn these things and then know these things. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth won't make you free unless you know it. And so it's this knowing that comes to us over our learning curve called three score and ten, this world that we're in, and by reason of strength, you might live another ten years. 
or might even reach a hundred. But all of it is a probation. All of it is a time of trial. All of it is a schoolhouse and it's classroom to classroom. Uh, if you understand that this world is not the world that you will ultimately be in, it's just a schoolhouse, it's a place to learn the lessons of life, then you relax a bit because God's got more in store for you than what you have now. And um, when, when you, you see it through your spiritual mind, then everything sort of makes a bit more spiritual sense. But if you're looking at things through your carnal mind, uh, you can be born again, but you can still have a carnal mind. That's why Paul said you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So a spiritual mind is, is opposite to a carnal mind. And so the war is within, between the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. For the flesh, carnal mind, wars against the spirit, spiritual mind. And these two are in opposition to one another, that you might not do the thing that you please. So you, you want to please God, but you can't because the mind is having a battle with an opposite. And so you learn to understand that this battle, this war is part of the process because ultimately you, you overcome. You, in other words, you cease from your own works and you overcome. And as an overcomer, you then in another category, you're in the church of the firstborn. So the world's population is made up of categories and classrooms. And some like school and some don't like school. Now, I never liked school and school didn't hate me. I got expelled from two of them. But the fact of the matter is that's the natural school. In God's schoolroom, God's schoolhouse, I'm quite comfortable. Um, some people are, some people aren't. So if you like school naturally, you might not like the school God's school spiritually. So look at it this way. You've got a, a long period of time on this earth given to you, three score and 10, that's 70 years. By reason of strength, that's another 10, that's 80 years. I'm 80 this year. And by God's grace, you might go on to 100. Hey, you might hit 120, but I don't think any longer than that. Uh, and then uh, it's deemed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Well, again, if you're renewing your mind over many years, you'll understand one thing, that the orthodox view of many of the things that we have taken on board are not necessarily right. Uh, the orthodox view could stumble on one word, but that one word could skew you for the rest of your time on earth. And so therefore, if we took one word, say, for instance, like judgment, and didn't really go into the, uh, the, the very insightfulness of the word through concordances, etc., you study to show yourself approved unto God, you'll find that that word judgment isn't necessarily a word to be fearful about, even though people are very fearful of judgment day, the judgment of God and all that. But if you look at the word, then you move out of fear into a fact of maybe rejoicing in the fact that God's judgments are righteous. God's judgments are truthful. So they're not judgments as in being all of most of the earth being cast into a fiery pit of hell for eternity. You, change, you have a bit of a change of mind about this. His judgments are, are victorious. You know, so you've got to go do word study on the word judgment. The word judgment is the word crisis. Uh, it starts with a K. Of course, if you go to the Greek, it's a K. But if you go to the, um, you know, and the Hebrew, but in the English, we put a C there and we get our crisis. And crisis is a, a deciding time. Crisis means a, uh, a turning point. Crisis means a you're, 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 you're on a time uh, uh, where you're being tried. It's not death and destruction and hell and fiery whatevers. 
So we could skew a lot of things by not being diligent on a word, just one word. You've got to look at that word, the word judgment. You know, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And we all think, oh, trembling, trembling again. No, the, the judgment started in the house of the Lord with Jesus Christ himself on the cross at Calvary. Because the only house then was Christ. The only place God lived was in Jesus Christ. It was Christ, or God in Christ, redeeming the world back to himself. God in Christ. God in Jesus Christ. The Father was in Jesus Christ, reconciling the world to uh, get the world to come back from being separated from God. So we, we then look at the things that men have been teaching us and say, you know, really, actually, I think this doctrine is ready for the dustbin bin of history because a lot of things, theological things that were brought to us as orthodox views are skewed. They're not really correct. So it's time to ditch that and do your own word study. You know, the Jewish people had, had the law, and they studied the law, but then they would come to certain words they didn't quite agree with, and so they got the, their theologians to come up with the oral law, you see, the oral law. So the oral law now is called the Talmud. Well, the Talmud is not the Torah. The Torah is the five, first five books of the Old Covenant written by Moses or written through Moses, given to Moses. And so sometimes the, the sayings are hard, hard to understand. And, and actually, we don't like what that was said. And we'll, we'll ask our theologians. So theologians come along, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they would come up with their oral law. And then they would explain it. This is what it really means. That's the Talmud. But a lot of it is mud. I mean, it just doesn't line up with what God has said through the law, through the word. So everything is based on the word of God. It's called the letter. And it's there and it won't change. Uh, and if we don't understand it, we have to actually ask the spirit of the law to give us understanding. But you can never change the word of God. Man can't change the word. Well, they, they try and they do. But it doesn't bring about any good result. It, it brings bad theology. So a lot of things uh, come into question when you are a student of the Word of God, when you're there to divide the Word of God. And that's our job, actually, is um, in our trial here on earth. And that's our job, is to divide the Word, separate the Word. And... Um, it's a critical time, a deciding time, a separating. That's what it means. All this word judgment, this is the words it means. Uh, turning point, trial, um, a crisis. Um, and there's one other word there that I, I do like, and I can't think of it right at this moment. Uh, oh, yeah, it's called probation. <laughs> you know, you're on probation. In other words, you've... Uh, you got yourself in trouble with the law and you go to court and uh, the judge is going to pass judgment. And it's a deciding time, it's judgment time. You've broken the law. Sin is broken law. You've broken the law. Now the judge is going to judge you. And um, he might say, you're guilty. And then he said, come back uh, in about a week and, and uh, the... the the, the judgment will be given as to your sentence, your, your time. And so uh, you, come, you have to come back, and if you're on probation, or you might be on bail, you come back, and then the judge says, well, you deserve 10 years in jail, but I've decided that you'll only do five years, but you're going to have five years probation. And it's going to start with the probation. And if you, during those five years, keep and promise to keep what the probation officer wants you to do, we will then most probably 
not put you in for another five, you, you'll, you'll be released. So people are on probation. There's many people out there that, that should be in jail, but the judge has said, we'll put you on probation. And that's a judgment. So in the natural, you, you see that. Well, spiritually, it's the same thing. God puts you on probation. In other words, people, the population, everybody is ever born. It's deemed unto man once to die, then the judgment, or you might say the probation or at the deciding time. It doesn't say being cast into hell forever and ever and ever. Okay, That's something that the orthodox view impresses upon us. But one day is a thousand years with God. A thousand years is one day with God. So God's day is not a man's day. You know, we're coming into a thousand years now. A thousand years, millennium, it's called. A thousand years. We're in the beginning of it. And during that thousand years, the overcomers will be judging the world. We'll judge the world. And that our judgments, again, are righteous judgments because we're in, made in the image of God and truthful. In fact, if you go to the book of uh, uh, Psalms 96, it'll talk about rejoice, about the judgments of God. Rejoice, be, be rejoicing. It's, it's, it's a good time. And then we see Jesus' judgment turned into victory. His judgment turned into victory. And uh, he, he led captivity captive, but it was judgment. So that word, just one word, can change everything and slant it in a different way and meaning. So judgment is the word crisis. And crisis is not fire. Now, from the throne of God, remember, from God's throne himself, fire is a lake of fire. Fire comes. It comes from his right hand. Fire is, is God is fire. Our God is a consuming fire. But God is good, and God is sovereign. So fire, in that sense, is not a thing to fear. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into fire. And uh, it was so hot, the people that threw him in died. And so Nebuchadnezzar, you know, was very upset with these three people because they wouldn't bow the knee to him and worship him because he made himself a big idol. And guess what? He looked in there and said, who's that other person in the fire there with them? Why well, he threw three people in. Who's this one? And it was the son of God. It was like the son of God. Yeah, it was the son of God. God was with them in the fire. So the fire wasn't something to be fearful of. The fire was God himself. God is a consuming fire. So the law, the law of God is fire. It's a fiery law. Let's put it this way. If you can handle it, I don't know if you can handle it. But if one day is a thousand years, that's just one day with God. I don't think everything's over all that quick. I think we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of years of God to sort out this problem called sin. Well, he dealt with it at the cross of Calvary. That was Judgment Day. Judgment begins in the house of God. Who was the house of God? It was Jesus. He was the only one that God lived in. And now he's the chief cornerstone and the house is being built. And the house is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the foundation is the, uh, the, the apostles' doctrine. Jesus, the chief cornerstone. And that house is God's mansion. And in, and in the Father's house is many mansions. That house is, is what's being built now. It's called the bridegroom. Jesus has a head and he has a body. Well, his body is being built. And we're members of the body of Christ. So we're members of this church of the one body. And we will be judging the nations. We will be judging the nations with righteous judgments. And what are we going to say? God is good. His mercy endureth forever. God is sovereign. If God is sovereign, think about it. Think about it. Just one word can change your whole, your whole perspective. If God is sovereign. Do you think he's going to lose anything that he created? Do you honestly think he's going to? No, there's a day called reconciliation of all things. God's going to reconcile all things back to himself. 
Well, it'll take many thousands of years, but God's got <laughs> a lot of years to hang around and see his will being done. Thy will be done. And as more and more Christians are saying the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on heaven and earth. Not my will, Lord, but thy will. God just outweighs all of us. And that's the pattern. Jesus Christ is the pattern. In all long suffering, all long suffering, Paul said. He said, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth for a pattern with all long suffering. God's outside of time. God created time for man. God's, God's day is a thousand years. So what I'm basically saying is do your research before you take the orthodox view of what judgment is. It's judgment unto victory. Judgment is righteousness and truth. God said, I, I, I delight in the fact that I'm, I want all men to be saved. God wants everyone to be saved. He doesn't want people to go to hell. There is a hell. Of course there's a hell. It was uh, reserved for those angels that fell. It wasn't made for man. It was made for the devils, the angels that fell. Lucifer and his gang. But fiery law is real. Now let's put it this way. In our world that, that we know, we know many people, we've been around living and everything, but you'll find that not everyone enjoys the thought of going to God's school. A lot want to play truant. I used to play truant all the time. And I think my daughter Gabby followed me in that. I think mean, she found out she was playing truant as a little girl. <laughs> I played truant all the time, and I was expelled uh, twice. Um, I didn't like school. But now I'm in God's schoolhouse. It's different. I, I love God's school. I love the fact that he, he corrects me and he guides me. And uh, I delight in that because I know that God's corrections afterwards produces peace, calmness, happiness, joy. In other words, you say to yourself, I, I needed that, Lord. Thank you so much. You took the time to correct me. And God corrects those that he loves. If he loves you, he's going to correct you. And he does love you. God is love. You think about it. God is love. And you see that you know, God's been given bad press because we had we have bad theology. You know, like the Jews had the Talmud, well, we have our, our orthodox views of God. God is love. That's his very name. He doesn't give you love. He is love. And love is patient. Love is kind. Does not take into account a wrong suffering. Believes all things. Bears all things. Love never fails. And Paul said, if you operate in love, you fulfill the law, the righteous law. You fulfill it completely by just love. And that the law is fulfilled when you operate in the love of God. And Jesus fulfilled the law, the letter of the law, by being obedient to the word of the Father. And the Father Basically, he said to the son, you've got to go to the cross. You, you've got to deal with this sin problem. And the only way to deal with sin, you've got someone's got to die. There's got to be a sacrifice. So you're the lamb of God. Off you go. I'll be in you. And you're going to go and you're going to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're going to die on the cross. Judgment's going to fall upon you. And it's judgment unto victory. And you then have the victory. We have the victory. So there has to be blood shed. When sin is about me, you have to have the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no redemption from sin. So it's all good news, really, when you think about it. <laughs> Everything is pretty good news. If you're in God's schoolhouse. 
because you're understanding that you're in a trial. You know, Jesus said, in, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. So we, we're, we're learning. We're learning that, you know, this, the world's not going to understand this. When you talk things like this, they're not going to understand because they have a mind that's a natural mind. The natural mind is not interested in things of this nature. They can't understand it anyway. It, it's so different. It's a ceiling. They can't pass over. They can't get it. You know, and they have their worldly religions. They have their worldly ways. And the worldly ways are opposite to God's ways, spiritual ways. So you've got the fleshly ways and you've got the spiritual ones. You can be spiritually uh, born again, but you can still be carnal-minded. So Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So now we're dealing with spirit. You are a spirit. Your mind now is spiritual. You've got it saved in your mind, it's spiritually minded. And eventually your body is going to be made uh, saved. You're going to be uh, caught up in there and you're going to be changed. And you're going to be looking like him. You look in the mirror and you're going to see yourself looking like Jesus. And you have a body that's immortal. So you're saved, saved, saved. Salvation is spirit, soul, and body. In the meantime, you can be saved uh, spirit. You can be saved soul. But we're still waiting for the adoption of our bodies to be caught up and changed. But, but it will happen. It's going to happen. Right now, I'm believing God, obviously, for the crumbs under the table of immortality. And uh, that, that's, that's my faith. And um, uh, <laughs> I'm doing good for 80, aren't I? Uh, and, uh, and as things continue, I expect to be stronger in that sense, physically, as well as spiritually and solely. But I also realize that we are, we are in a trial. We're in a temptation. And we have to learn to operate the way we're taught in the new covenant to be overcomers. Benny, can you shut up? Uh, I keep telling him I've got to speak to God's people today and that we're going to talk about Jesus so for him to be a good dog. So <laughs> he's being disobedient now. So anyway, Jesus suffered obedience. He suffered obedience. Yeah. So he was taught obedience by the things that he suffered. In other words, he was taught obedience. Jesus, we're talking about, learned obedience through the things that he suffered. But it tells me that you're going to learn and I'm going to learn obedience to the things that we suffer, the things that we go through. And uh, if you think that you're not going to have certain times of suffering, then you're deluded. Uh, you've got to pick up your cross and follow him to Calvary. And if the head suffered, you'll suffer as well. But the good news is that we overcome. It's an overcoming time. And, and, and we learn to wait and to rest and to focus on the Lord, keeping ourselves in that shadow of the Almighty. So when we go through our time of trials, at the end of it, we come out victory, victorious. But we do go through these times. Uh, now, again, if, if, if we get certain things wrong from the beginning, then everything gets skewed, and then we'll have a gospel of prosperity all the time. You know, you, you, you shouldn't be sick because you, Jesus was sick on your behalf, so you shouldn't be sick. God's not some substitutionary object in that sense. Yes, he overcame sin, sickness, disease, etc., but you find yourself one day maybe in this trial and you draw on that, but don't think you're never going to have sickness in your life. You're never going to have a trial. You're never going to have a loss. You will have a loss, but you learn that that loss can be turned into victory in ways that you could never imagine because God's in control. God is sovereign. And when you know that, when God is sovereign, you know that you're in his hands. He'll cling to you. He'll not let you go. Nothing can separate you from your father. Nothing. Good days, bad days, evil days, nothing can separate you. When you seem to know that, then you, 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 you say, well, okay. 
and I'll, I'll learn to deal with this situation, with this child. I give God the glory. I give God the glory. I, I, I'll never let God lead my thinking or my mind while I'm going through these hard times, bad times, seemingly evil times. That God is in all things. And I'll come through this by God's grace. I'll come through this. And you will come through this. And at the end of it, you'll realize that you've been changed by this so-called bad, evil, sick, depressing time. You've been changed. Something about you has changed. Yeah, you've been changed in your character. You're looking more like Jesus on the inside because you never really gain much in prosperity. You, your character isn't changed during prosperity. You, in fact, if anything, it just keeps you prideful, uh, arrogant. Um, you think you're the bee's knees. It's just the nature of the human nature of a man or a woman who just lives in prosperity all the time. You're born with a silver spoon in your mouth or a golden one. You've never learned the fact that sometimes you're going to have situations that you don't like. And these situations are downtimes. And it seems like God's left you. It seems like, you know, he's, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But as you continue to renew your mind, you know that that's not true. That's not true. If the head suffered, what makes you think you won't suffer? Loss. And Paul said, I've suffered the loss of all things. But then in the, in the end of it, he said, but I, I now count all these things, but dung in comparison to what I know now. I know he lives. I know he loves me. I know the truth. And that truth has made me free. It makes you free. So word studies are important. So Study that word, judgment, means crisis, a deciding time. It's a, a turning point. That's all it means. And um, you have decided to follow Jesus. You have decided to go into his classrooms. Now, many say, I'm opting out. I'm not opting out. I'm not, I'm not going to uh, lose my life. I love my life. And I'm, I'm here to make money and prosper. And I, I'm not going to join that class of losers. Well, then you've opted out. And now it's deemed unto man wants to die in the judgment. So eventually, uh, judgment day will come. It's called the white throne judgment. Everything, everyone is raised up except a group called the overcomers because they've already been judged. <laughs> They're, they're in the first resurrection. And in the first resurrection, Paul said, be blessed, be blessed. You're in the first resurrection. And the, 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 the second judgment, the second resurrection has no power over you. Because you've already done your time. You've already been obedient in your probationary period. You've, 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 you've kept the promises. You've kept looking at the cross, Jesus. You haven't let go. You're going to go through it. But the others have opted out. They don't want it. Well, no one escapes. No one. If you don't do it this, this time, you're going to do it at a later time. And then the judgments will come. But remember, we're not talking uh, judgments to the point where he loses those who he created. He's not going to lose anybody. He's going to restore all things that are going to be restored. Now, that's a very hard position on many people's minds to take because all they've ever heard is the orthodox view. But there's a time, there's going to be a global jubilee where everyone's released, everyone's restored back. But you've got to pay the penalty for sin. Everyone does. And those that have judged themselves now it bodes well with you. If you judge yourself, you shall not be judged later because you've, you've judged yourself. You know, I've lived a very colorful life and um, I was out of the will of God for many years. I was 33 before I received the law. 
But there was a point right after that, I judged myself. I judged myself. I told God, you know, please, Lord, forgive me for all the things that I did, all the things that I shouldn't have done, and all the people I've corrupted. And, uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, an event with God where he turned up and I was thrown on the floor and delivered. No man delivered me, God delivered me. But I judged myself. You judge yourself. And that judgment of yourself, I think, continues through your school days with Jesus on this earth. You know, we, 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 we kick, if you're quick to judge, quick to forgive, quick to forget, quick to love, all these things build your character. You look more like Jesus. God will have what he said in the beginning. Let us make man in our image and likeness. He's not going to lose anybody. He's going to get everybody to come back to him. And so those of us that are on the earth during this thousand years, the church of the one body, us who are called the overcomers, who've come back, caught up, met him in the sky, come back, we're the judges. We'll, we'll judge the nations with a rod of iron and tell them about the Lord is good and he is sovereign and many will come to know him. And, uh, and, and, and this knowing will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. All shall know him. All shall bow the knee. The whole earth will be covered with righteous people. Righteous, truthful, peace, will be the gospel that will be preached. The gospel of peace. Anyway, I'm going to close there. But uh, remember, take that word judgment. Look it up in your concordance. You'll see it's the word crisis. Then check out crisis, what, what crisis means. And it's not what we're being told it does in the orthodox view. Anyway, with that, I say God bless you. Appreciate you. And we'll open up now to question time. In Jesus' name, amen. <music> Tell me that I'm too young to know I love you so And you love me Our day will come If we just wait a while No tears for us Think love and wear a smile Our dreams are music Because we'll always stay in love This way our day will come Ah. Uh.